Hello and welcome to the fourth part in this video series on composing to picture in Dorico Pro 5. Today I'll be going over how to work with your music even further in the context of working to footage in Dorico and getting your music out of Dorico so that you can record it with live players or get to mixing in a DAW. If you missed the first three videos, go ahead and check those videos out so that you know what we're working with today, then come back and watch this video. All right, let's get started. Okay, so last time we started writing some music for the beginning part of this scene. And then we calculated out that for the running part in this scene, uh, 165, we match up pretty nicely with both of these markers. Let's write some chasing running music. So I have an idea that I might want to try out. I'll engage note input. So I have this very, very simple idea here and just on the piano, let's see how it works. Let me just copy these notes and uh, let's paste them to the violins. I'll also use my special key command that I spoke about in the last video, Shift Alt M, which copies notes down to one staff and down one more time to copy to the violas. Now let's give that a decent dynamic. Let's say mezzo forte to start. Now let's say I want to thicken that out with a few woodwinds. Let me go ahead and give this to some clarinets. And you know what, just so that ones can breathe, I'll use my other special key command, Alt M or Option M to move some notes down to uh, bottom staff. And I might want to add a little bass. So I'm going to not play in these notes this time. I'm going to select five on my keyboard to engage eight notes. Now I'll just hit A on my keyboard twice with uh, note input engaged. Now those are in the wrong octave that I want, so I'm going to select these, hit Command Alt and then down on the arrow key to move them down a whole octave. Now I'm gonna use my other special key command, Shift Option M to copy that down to the bases. It's in unison with it, so I'm going to do the same thing, Command Option down on the arrow key to put it down an octave. Let me select both of these, Shift D for dynamics, and F for mezzo forte, and there we go. Let's copy this over here. I don't need the dynamics here. It's the same thing and keep copying these over. Now, how about I, if I want the same thing in the bassoons I have up here? I just uh, copied them with Command C and I pasted them on Command V here. Now, let's say just for a little bit more impact in the horns, I want to give a chord. So what I just did here was I selected one note hit enter to invoke no input, and then using shift and the down arrow key, extending the carrot down to multiple staves. Now on my keyboard, I can select a note value and then play a chord. And Dorico will voice the chord across all of these different parts. Now I'll hit command and then the arrow key over to go to the next measure. And how about the next measure over? Now let's see what we got. Now what I'm planning on doing when we get to this marker of the platform having spun, I just want to do basically this exact same thing, but in a new key. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select these parts. I'm using shift and then the arrow keys to continue selecting. Now I'm gonna hit R on my keyboard and that'll repeat exactly all this. However, I'm going to go into the right menu and go to transpose here. Now I want to go up a major third, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Let's select third, major, up, and I'll just keep all of these the same. Okay, so everything should be on C sharps now. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this exact same thing with every other instrument. Hit repeat, transpose, okay, everything's up. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the entire bassoon part. I hit Command C and then scroll down to the timpani part and just give those notes to it. I think this would be really nice with a melody. So like, for example, let's add a simple one in the trumpet. And 
why don't we give it to a few other instruments as well, like the oboe, both the oboes, why not? And just to keep things bright, let's give them to the flutes and put them up an octave as well so that they sound nice and bright. All right, now let's listen to that with those changes. Now, because we have a repetition here, this is a compositional thing, not a Dorico thing, but uh, I might want to add more texture and variety here just to not make it so samey samey. Let's go back to page view. Now, you can see that things are starting to feel a little compressed. Firstly, let me get rid of what I'm not using. So let me go to setup mode. I'm not using the snare drum here, so I'll just hit delete, delete player and part layouts. And what I can do with the grand staff is I'll go ahead and hide it from the full score. So I have the grand staff selected in the players panel. I'm just gonna go to layouts here and uncheck the full score as in the grand staff won't uh, appear in the full score. Final thing I think I might do is shift command L and let's just change the size of the staves. Okay. So that's a little bit more manageable. Dorco's doing a good job of pushing some staves out of the way so that it still looks good. Might also notice that these harp notes aren't in red. That's because these are out of the key that the harp is using for its pedal markings. So I'm just gonna select these and we'll go up to the right mode. Down here we have this calculate harp pedals option. Now, you'll see this signpost has appeared, but the notes have that were in red, they have disappeared and are just regular now. This is telling me that there's a harp pedal diagram in the part that we're not seeing on the full score. There are options to show that in the full score if we want to. So let's assume that I completed this and it's the cue that I will be known for for years to come. Now we might want to have real musicians play this. So we can go ahead and look at some of these parts and I'll select a note on a part, hit W and that'll take me to that part. Now you can see this already looks really lovely just laid out with the music that the violin one has. I have no problems with it, it looks very good. Often in the studio setting, there might be certain standards that uh, players will be used to. So one of those standards is having four bars per system. So let me hit shift command L to open layout options. And you want, I'm going to select all the layouts so that my decisions go across all of them. Now let me go to the staves and systems part and hit the casting off section. And you can see this option fixed number of bars per system. That's basically per line if you're not familiar with the word system in this context and it defaults to four, that's what I want. So I'll hit apply. Now let's see, there are now four measures per system, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I even applied it to the full uh, layout. So let me hit W to go back. And yeah, that looks about right. Now something else that might be helpful in context is bar numbers under every single bar. So let me go back to layout options. Bar numbers out here, let me make sure to select all my layouts and I'll hit every bar here. Let me hit apply and see what happens. On the full score, I have bar numbers above the score and then in the part, let me see, let's go to the violin part real quick. They're at the bottom. So we'll go to print mode. I'll hit command five on my keyboard. I want to export these as graphics. I'll select all of these, excluding the grand staff sketching layout because no one's gonna play that. That was just for me. And let's set some things. So graphics, I want to send them as PDFs. They can be in mono, there's no color. I can set the destination folder for when I export these and file name options. And so once I've set a destination for these, all I have to do is hit export and Dorico will go through each one, package them all into a separate PDF and it's super quick and easy. Now, if I wasn't going to record these, but I still want to take this further in my workflow, then what I can do instead is up here in file, go down to export and I can do a few things. I can export the audio. So let's see what happens when I click that. Now I can select exactly what to export if I need to. So I can say export players as separate files, which means each one of these will be exported almost as a stem that I can take into a DAW and mix even further, add my own EQs and get really, really granular with 
that sort of thing. Or you could export MIDI and you could export the MIDI files for each one of these parts and import that MIDI into a DAW like Cubase. You could use your own virtual instruments to take the sound of what you've notated even further without having to compose in a DAW, which for some people isn't as comfortable as notating or composing music in a notation software where you can see all of the parts um, and how they interact with notes. I think that could be a very powerful workflow that could work for a lot of people. So. By now, you know how to set up a project perfect for composing to picture in Dorico, including setting up your project with all the instruments you want, attaching your video to a flow and working with video in Dorico, working with markers and how powerful they can be in Dorico, and using all of Dorico's workflow um, tools to make your composing and editing really quick which is super useful in this line of work where you have to align specifically with certain moments. Dorco has just so many options for rebarring music, editing music you already have inputted, etc. All right, so that's it from me for this video series. If you like this, then give this video a like. We would really appreciate it. If you wanna see more of my stuff, you can check out my channel at Ernesto Composer. I have my own channel here on YouTube where I document my career as a composer, show off my process when it comes to composing music, uh, score study, breakdown videos, videos on music technology, including Dorico. All that info will be down below. Thanks so much for watching and take care.